Hello, I'm Martin Lewis of MoneySavingExpert.com and this is an important warning for anyone with a lifetime ISA, a LISA, or anyone aged 18 to 39 who one day wants to buy their first house. The lifetime ISA is on the face of it a good product and it is a good product for most people, but it is a dead duck product for many who are living in urban areas with a really big problem. And it's left many young people paying fines of hundreds or thousands of pounds to the government to access their own money they have saved to buy a first time house. I've today contacted the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, to ask him to fix lifetime ISAs in the coming autumn statement. So I wanna run you through briefly what the problem is, what the solution is to. So look, the Lifetime ISA is a tax-free savings account anyone aged 18 to 39 can open. And it gives savers a 25% bonus free money on top towards either a first-time property or if you wait till retirement, but it's not as good till retirement. So I tend to focus on it as a first-time buyer's uh, product. Yet the issue is this, Lifetime ISAs launched in 2017 and there was a cap on the house that you could buy. You couldn't buy a property worth more than £450,000. Well, house prices, even with current corrections, have gone up 33% in that time, but the Lifetime ISA cap hasn't changed. And the problem is, if you take your money out for any other reason than buying a first time home, you pay a fine. So let's just run through this in practical terms so you can see the problem. So you've saved for five years in the lifetime ISA, the maximum amount of £4,000 a year. That means you now have 25 grand in there. You put 20,000 in and the state has added five grand on top. So you have £25,000. Yet the home that you were saving for, which was once under the property cap, is now above the property cap. So you can't use your LISA towards it. Of course, you want to get your money out because you're going to need it for a deposit. But to get your money out for any other reason than buying a first time property or waiting until you're age 60, which is a long time away, you have a penalty of 25 percent. So you've got £25,000, you lose 25% on it. That means you only get 18,750 quid back. In other words, 1,250 quid less than you put in. That fine goes to the state. Now, it seems to me that is just plain wrong. What I'm asking the Chancellor to do is one of two things, or perhaps both. The simple one would be, if someone's buying a property as a first time buyer above £450,000, just wipe the excess penalty, which actually means you have a 20% penalty. So at least people get back the money they put in. They may not get the bonus, but they get back the money they put in. More complicated, but also doable, is uprate the threshold, link it to house prices, so people can buy bigger properties on the lifetime ISA. This is not that difficult to fix. I hope the Chancellor will do it in the autumn statement. He's talked about doing new things for first time buyers. Well, my message is before you come up with any newfangled scheme, fix the dead duck scheme that we've already got. As for whether lifetime ISAs are still worth it, well, look, if you're going to buy a property that's definitely way below the threshold, yes, it's absolutely worth saving in a lifetime ISA as long as you know you're going to buy that property, because unless they change the terms, you will face a penalty. There's more details on the lifetime ISAs and the campaign to the Chancellor on moneysavingexpert.com. But I wanted to explain to you what I'm doing.